and judgment in Ephra Heart Limited and Lover, Tandy Earth Limited, Friends of the Earth Limited, and London Borough of Hilliden and others, and Secretary of State for Transport and Commerce. This morning we are handing down the judgments of this court in a number of related proceedings that have come before us from the Divisional Court, which concern the proposed expansion of capacity at Heathrow Airport by the addition of a third runway under the policy set out in the Airport's National Policy Statement, New Runway Capacity and Infrastructure at Airports in the South East of England, uh, which we shall refer to as the ANPS. That document, designated by the then Secretary of State for Transport in June 2018, is a national policy statement prepared under Section 5.1 of the Planning Act 2008. It was subject to a number of legal challenges brought by claims for judicial review in accordance with the procedure that Parliament has provided for such challenges to be brought in Section 13.1 of the Planning Act. The hearing of the proceedings in this court was live streamed to a wide audience and so is this morning's hearing. The first judgment addresses a challenge brought by Heathrow Hub Limited and Runway Innovations Limited who proposed extending the northern runway at Heathrow. The second deals with several challenges brought by a number of local authorities, the Mayor of London, Greenpeace Limited, Friends of the Earth Limited and Plan B Earth concerning the planning aspects of the ANPS and its process. In the first judgment, we have concluded that the arguments put forward by the appellants on legitimate expectation, the materiality of the absence of any assurance from Heathrow Airport Limited to implement Heathrow Hub's scheme for an extended northern runway, and various uh, grounds concerning the law of competition, must all fail. As to legitimate expectation, the Divisional Court rejected Heathrow Hub's argument that the Secretary of State's request that Heathrow Hub obtain an assurance from Heathrow Airport Limited to implement their extended northern runway scheme amounted to a breach of a legitimate expectation that the Secretary of State would not take into account any risks arising from the fact that Heathrow Hub depended upon Heathrow Airport Limited to deliver its extended northern runway scheme in making the decision to prefer the Northwest Runway Scheme. Heathrow Hub challenged this conclusion on appeal. We have upheld the Divisional Court's conclusion that there was no express or implied promise or any regular pattern of behaviour amounting to a representation that this would never be a consideration in the preference decision process still less a clear and unambiguous representation, devoid of any relevant qualification, such as to justify a finding in law of legitimate expectation. As to materiality, the Divisional Court held that if the Secretary of State had not requested an assurance, or if Heathrow Airport Limited had given an assurance, this would have made no difference to the preference or designation decisions because the objective merits of the extended northern runway scheme remained the same. Heathrow Hub challenged this finding on appeal. We have held that the Divisional Court was entitled to find, on the evidence, that the absence of an assurance was immaterial to the preference and designation decisions. We have also held that it was highly likely that the designation decision would have been the same whether or not an assurance had been requested or forthcoming, and accordingly, under Section 31 a of the Senior Courts Act 1981, 
the divisional court would have been bound to dismiss Heathrow Hub's claim for judicial review in any event. In the second judgment, we have emphasised the long-established limits of the court's role when exercising its jurisdiction in claims for judicial review. As an appellate court, we operate within the same limits. We have made it clear that we are not concerned in these proceedings with the political debate and controversy to which the prospect of a third runway being constructed at Heathrow has given rise. That is none of the court's business. We have emphasised that the basic question before us in these claims is an entirely legal question. We are required, and only required, to determine whether the Divisional Court was wrong to conclude that the ANPS was produced lawfully. Our task, therefore, and our decision, does not touch the substance of the policy embodied in the ANPS. In particular, our decision is not concerned with the merits of expanding Heathrow by adding a third runway, or of any alternative project or of doing nothing at all to increase the United Kingdom's aviation capacity. Those matters are the government's responsibility and the government's alone. To a substantial extent, for the reasons we have set out, we agree with the analysis and conclusions of the Divisional Court. Like the Divisional Court, we have concluded that the challenges to the ANPS must fail on the issues relating to the operation of the Habitats Directive and also on all but one of the issues concerning the operation of the Strategic Environmental Assessment Directive. However, we have concluded that the challenges should succeed in one important respect. This relates to the legislative provisions concerning the government's policy and commitments on climate change. In particular, the provision in Section 5.8 of the Planning Act, which requires that the reasons for the policy set out in the ANPS must include an explanation of how the policy set out in the statement takes account of government policy relating to the mitigation of and adaptation to climate change. We have concluded in particular that the designation of the ANPS was unlawful by reason of a failure to take into account the government's commitment to the provisions of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change concluded in December 2015 and ratified by the United <coughs> Kingdom in November 2016. We have concluded that the ANPS was not produced as the law requires, and indeed as Parliament has expressly provided. The statutory regime for the formulation of a national policy statement, which Parliament put in place in the Planning Act, was not fully complied with. The Paris Agreement ought to have been taken into account by the Secretary of State in the preparation of the ANPS and an explanation given as to how it was taken into account, but it was not. That, in our view, is legally fatal to the ANPS in its present form. As we have explained, the normal result in a successful claim for judicial review must follow that the court will not permit unlawful action by a public body to stand. Appropriate relief must therefore be granted, as normally it will where the unlawfulness in the conduct of the executive is established. The Secretary of State did not contend that if this was our conclusion, the outcome would or might have been no different. 
though such an argument was pursued by Heathrow Airport Limited. In our view, it is necessary to grant a suitable remedy at this stage to ensure, at least, that the ANPS does not remain effective in its present unlawful form pending the outcome of its statutory review under Section 6 of the Planning Act in the light of the Paris Agreement. Section 6.5 of the Planning Act states that after completing a review of all or part of a national policy statement, the Secretary of State must do one of the following. A. Amend the statement. B. Withdraw the statement's designation as a national policy statement. C. Leave the statement as it is. The parties have had an opportunity, in the light of our draft judgments, to make submissions to us on the appropriate remedy to reflect the conclusions we have reached. In the light of those submissions, we have concluded that the appropriate remedy is a declaration, the effect of which will be to declare the designation decision unlawful and to prevent the ANPS from having any legal effect unless and until the Secretary of State has undertaken a review of it in accordance with the relevant statutory provisions, including the provisions of Sections 6, 7 and 9 of the Planning Act 2008. Any such review would have to be conducted in accordance with the judgment of this Court. The initiation, scope and timescale of any review must and will be a matter for the Secretary of State to decide. Our decision should be properly understood. We have not decided and could not decide that there will be no third runway at Heathrow. We have not found that a national policy statement supporting this project is necessarily incompatible with the United Kingdom's commitment to reducing carbon emissions and mitigating climate change under the Paris Agreement, or with any other policy the government may adopt or international obligation it may undertake. The consequence of our decision is that the government will now have the opportunity to reconsider the ANPS in accordance with the clear statutory requirements that Parliament has imposed. We should add finally that having seen our judgment in draft, the government has not opposed the grant of a remedy, nor has the government sought permission to appeal from our decision to the Supreme Court. I now turn to pronounce the orders we make in the four cases before us. In the Heathrow Hub appeal, the order will be that the appeal is dismissed and the appellants are to pay the respondents' costs of the appeal to be the subject of detailed assessment if not agreed. The order for costs made by the Divisional Court in this matter below stands. The appellate's application for permission to appeal to the Supreme Court is refused. In Plan B, Earth's claim, the order will be that the order of the Divisional Court in the claim is set aside, permission to apply for judicial review is granted, a declaration is granted that A, the Secretary of State acted unlawfully in failing to take into account the Paris Agreement on Climate Change when deciding to designate the airport's national policy statement in support of the expansion of Heathrow Airport. B, the airport national policy statement is of no legal effect unless and until the Secretary of State has undertaken a review of it in accordance with the relevant provisions of the Planning Act 2008. 
The defendant is to pay the costs of the claimant in the divisional court and in this court, subject to detailed assessment and a cap of 35,000 in respect of the costs in the divisional court and a cap of 35,000 in respect of the costs in this court. Permission to appeal to the Supreme Court is refused. In Friends of the Earth's claim, the order will be that. The order of the divisional court in the claim is set aside. Permission to apply for judicial review is granted. A declaration is granted that A. The Secretary of State acted unlawfully in failing to take into account the Paris Agreement on Climate Change when deciding to designate the airport's national policy statement in support of the expansion of Heathrow Airport. B. The airport national policy statement is of no legal effect unless and until the Secretary of State has undertaken a review of it in accordance with the relevant provisions of the Planning Act 2008. The defendant is to pay the costs of the claimant in the divisional court and in this court, subject to detailed assessment, and a cap of 35,000 in respect of the costs in the divisional court, and a cap of 35,000 in respect of the costs in this court. Permission to appeal to the Supreme Court is refused. In the Hillingdon Claimant's Appeal, the order will be that the appeal on all three grounds raised by these appellants in the appellant's notice is dismissed. The appellants are to pay the respondent's costs to be assessed if not agreed. Permission to appeal to the Supreme Court is refused. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.